Hello, my name is Mary Van Donzel and I am a speech language pathologist with a special interest in the use of assistive technology and augmentative and alternative communication to increase the communication skills of children with complex communication needs. This webinar is sponsored by the Idaho Assistive Technology Project. Let us begin the webinar, Communication Apps. What is there to know? After completing this webinar, the learner will be able to state at least two pros and cons of using communication apps, explain how to evaluate the key features of a communication app, and list at least two communication apps that are currently available. Our agenda today includes Discussing the pros and cons of using communication apps with mobile technology. Reviewing a systematic framework to compare and select communication apps. And exploring some of the communication apps that are currently available on the market today. In this exploration, we will be covering some of the key features of these apps in relation to their use for communication. The use of mobile technologies has really changed the way that people access the world as a whole. These change, changes in access includes people who use AAC. New technologies are being developed all the time. Some of the new technologies, including the use of iPads, Androids, and even iPhones. With the development of new technology, comes updates and changes on a regular basis, including those with tablets and apps. In the fall of 2017, Apple is reported to be releasing their 11th version of their iOS software for the iPhone and iPad. But Apple doesn't have the sole market on tablets. Android tablets are also available and are made by various companies such as NVIDIA, Samsung, Sony, and others. With easier access to mobile technology, new apps also become available. According to Statista, in January 2017, the Apple Store had 2.2 million apps available. This is an increase from the 800 apps when it first started in July 2008. As of March 2017, Google Play had 2.8 million apps, an increase of 200,000 apps when compared to December 2016. That's a lot of apps that are available to the consumer. As mobile technology is becoming cheaper, it is also making it easier for consumers to buy and use this technology. So what does all this technology mean to the individual who has difficulty verbally communicating with others? As mobile technology continues to grow, it becomes accessible to use affordable to obtain, and socially accepted by others in the community. Mobile technologies also allow a person who uses AAC to have access to other non-AAC device activities, such as social media like Facebook or Twitter, pictures, books, movies, games, and so many other things that are made available at the tips of the fingers through the internet and Wi-Fi services. In their article about the iPad and mobile technology revolution, McNaughton and Light discuss the benefits and challenges 
to using AAC apps for communication purposes. These pros and cons are important to keep in mind when considering the use of a communication app. Some of the benefits of using communication apps includes the increased awareness and social acceptance of the app because everyone now has a device. People who use AAC would not stand out from their peers for having a tablet or a smartphone. Consumer empowerment is also a benefit of communication apps. The low cost of communication apps and the ability for the consumer, such as parents or professionals, to purchase the communication apps changes how AAC options are accessed. An increasing number of the availability of communication apps, the affordable nature of the apps, and the social acceptance of mobile technology all result in an increased adoption of AAC as a communication tool. As more technology becomes used and is available to individuals within society, the more knowledge there is about using technology like apps which can make it easier for those who do not have a lot of background using technology. The ability to use the tablet for communication as well as within other social areas is a benefit of a communication app. People who use AAC will have easier access to other technologies such as social media, which can build the social network of the person with a complex communication need. The last benefit that is discussed is that as communication apps become more accessible, it allows for more research related to AAC from a variety of different sources. It also allows for the sharing of ideas for new development within communication apps. When considering the benefits of communication apps, it is also imperative to be aware of the challenges that can occur when using a communication app. A key challenge to using a communication app is that the focus must be kept on communication and not the technology itself. The technology is only the tool that allows the person using AAC to communicate and it's important to find the right communication app to facilitate the user's communication skills with others. It is also important to make sure that assessment and intervention for the communication app is being appropriately conducted. AAC evaluations remain important for someone who would benefit for a com from a communication app because the communication app and its features need to match the skills and abilities of the user. It is also important to remember the need to set appropriate goals and to teach the use of the communication app through appropriate intervention. Another challenge that can be found within communication apps is the ease of access for all people who use AAC. Not all communication apps can be individualized for the person using AAC to maximize their communication skills. It is important to continue to carefully choose communication apps through a systematic process that matches the skills of the user to the features of the communication app. One communication app is not made for all persons with complex communication needs. And although communication apps have opened doors for many, there is still a lot of research and development that can be done to maximize the communication of people who use AAC when they are using communication apps. There is also a lot of research and development needed into how to integrate the full use of the mobile technology, allowing the person with a complex communication need to access the communication app and to be able to utilize it for other features on the mobile device, such as Twitter, Facebook, gaming, etc.
In the end, the key factor to remember when considering an AAC app is that the goal for using AAC is successful communication. Once the decision has been made to use an AAC app for communication, the next step is to determine which one is the right one to choose. First, it's important to consider the individual's strengths and weaknesses in relation to access of an app and their level of communication. Based upon the individual's skill level, mobile technology may not be the best fit. It may be more beneficial to use a dedicated speech generating device. If it is determined that mobile technology and a communication app is the best fit for the individual, then it is important to be familiar with the communication apps that are currently available in the market. This knowledge allows for choosing the AAC app that best meets the needs of the user and allows for effective communication across a variety of situations and settings. Knowing the features available for the communication app is crucial in the decision-making process. Feature matching the strengths and weaknesses of the individual to the different features of the communication app would be the third step. Feature matching is an important step in choosing a communication app because it provides structure or a set of rules and questions that one should consider when evaluating a communication app for someone with complex communication needs. Once a communication app is determined to be the best option for the individual and a feature matching analysis has been performed, then it is important to conduct a clinical trial to ensure the communication app is the best fit for the individual. There is not one app that fits all users, so a clinical trial is crucial. The length of the trial may vary from a couple weeks to a couple months, but it is important to provide an opportunity to use the communication app in a variety of settings and or activities so that the most information to be gathered can be obtained in order to determine success with the communication app. Gosnell, Costello, and Shane have developed a systematic way to conduct a feature matching analysis of communication apps. Their analysis includes 11 main categories. Let's take a look at these categories. The first category is purpose of use. Why was the app created? Was it for receptive language? Single word expression? Conversation? All of this information is important to know. Another category is the type of output that is being used. Is it digital speech or thin synthetic speech? Is there no speech at all involved in the output message? Knowing the output of the app can help to best meet the needs of the user. The category for speech settings refers to the volume, rate, pitch, and other options for the actual speaking of the device. Can customization of the speech options occur? For example, can you slow the rate of speech down or can you customize the device to speak after each word versus each sentence or message? Representation refers to the options involved with the icons or syllable symbols used in the app. Are the symbols photographs or symbol sticks? Or maybe they're picture communication symbols or PCS.
can you modify the symbols or input import your own icon symbols? This category is important to know because an individual may need real pictures used for the icon symbols in order to understand their meaning. The display category refers to the various layouts that are available, such as 2x2 two two grid or 6x6 six six icons on the screen. Is it a topic choice board or a scene based board? It also includes information on whether it's a dynamic display where the screens change according to icon selection. Or is the display static or fixed, where the screen does not change? Or perhaps it's hybrid and does a little bit of both. The ability to customize sizes of symbols, fonts, colors, and borders are also considered within this category. The sixth category is the feedback features. This category relates to the ability to add input when an icon is presented or selected. This would include things like highlighting the icon or providing visual feedback. Can you deactivate an icon so it can't be selected? Feedback features can impact the success of communication. Rate enhancement is another area that is considered. This area refers to those strategies that allow for a quicker rate of communication, such as using word prediction or lists for frequently used words or icons. Can you turn these strategies on and off? Access covers how a user interacts with the device. Are icons chosen with direct selection, eye gaze, or scanning? The customization allows you to further modify the access through options such as dwell time or touch enter. Required motor competencies are an important area to consider because an individual may need to be able to have specific motor abilities to interact with the app. Support is the area that covers whether there is resources for the user to learn about the app and whether technical support is available for the app. Having assistance with the ins and outs of an app or having someone that can troubleshoot an issue occurring within an app can be an important tool for the person using AAC and their families. There is also a category for miscellaneous that covers different options that relate to using the app for emailing, texting, or even web-based editing. Not all communication apps that are available have these 11 categories or it may not be easy to gather information regarding the categories. However, these feature matching categories are important to become familiar with and consider when selecting a communication app for someone to use for communication purposes. So we've talked about the features that are important to consider when selecting a communication app. So let's take a look at what these features look like in an easily accessible and useful chart. These charts have been made available through Children's Hospital Boston's website at www.childrenshospital.org backslash ACP. The first link is for the full chart of the feature matching communication applications. The second link is for a smaller chart that has been developed for the same purpose. And the last link is a video demonstration. So let's take a look at what these resources look like. So 
So here you can see the Augmentative Communication Program Overview page for Boston Children's Hospital. There's a lot of information on here in relation to handouts and resources and some of the new research and innovation that's occurring at Boston Children's Hospital. So here is the first link, which is a feature matching communication application that has been set up for you in a chart. It is a five page document that gives you the ability to write the name of the app over here in the left hand corner. Let's take a look at all five pages first. So you have page one, two, three, four, and five. And you can see that they're color coded as well on each of the pages. So over here on the left hand side you have the ability to write the name of the app. And then there are categories along the horizontal axis that allows you to color code and provide more specific information regarding those 11 categories. So as you can see, for example, on the first page you have purpose of use, output, speech settings, customization, and representation. For example, under output, you can see columns for digitized speech, synthesized speech, whether it's a male or female voice, a child voice, whether or not there's multiple languages, and whether or not there's voice output or no voice output. On the full chart, each category gives you specific feature areas to consider in your decision making. And really, you can mark a plus or a minus or a check or an X or leave it blank if it's not available. Just as a simple, systematic way for you to look at what the apps are and what sort of features are available to make feature analysis a little bit easier. In the smaller chart that's been developed for feature matching, you can see that this is only a one-page document. There are limited categories and features within the categories, but it provides color coding of the categories and allows for some feature analysis or matching to occur for specific apps that are being considered. So again, here you have the ability to write down the apps. There are some of the categories chosen, including output, representation, customization, the ability of access or ease of access, editing, and the price, as well as any other information that you might feel would be useful. So if you are interested in learning more about how to complete one of these feature matching charts, Children's Hospital Boston has made available a video tutorial that would be useful to watch. The video itself was developed by Jessica Gosnell Karen, who is a speech language pathologist at Children's Hospital Boston. The video is about 11 minutes and it demonstrates how to use the chart when considering AAC applications. So we've talked about how continued use of mobile technology has changed how we view communication through the use of communication apps. We've also talked about things to consider, both benefits and challenges, for communication apps and explored a feature matching analysis method <coughs> when considering a communication app for a person with a complex communication need. So now let's take a look at some of the communication apps that are available. <coughs> This activity is meant to be an exploration of some communication apps that are currently available on the market through either the Apple Store or Google Play. 
Some apps are free and some need to be purchased. With all of that being said, I feel it is also important to note that the apps that are being presented are in no way meant to be an endorsement of the communication app itself. <laughs> These are only a sampling of some of the apps that are currently available. It's also important to note that each individual person is unique in their communication needs. There is no one communication app that is suited for everyone. It is best to practice, or it is best practice, to select an AAC app for communication after the completion of a thorough AAC evaluation process and feature matching analysis. So let's start by taking a look at some of those apps that are currently available. TapSpeak offers three different types of apps, the TapSpeak button, TapSpeak sequence, and TapSpeak choice. If you want more thorough information, you can visit their website here. The TapSpeak button is for single message use and teaching of cause and effect. It's similar to the Big Mac that we're familiar with. The TapSpeak sequence provides sequenced messages when activated to allow more communication participation to occur. This program can be similar to the step-by-step -step with levels that you may be familiar with. The TapSpeak choice in the lower part of your screen offers more advanced communication opportunities from a simple two-button communication board to a full core vocabulary page sets. So this one you can just have two icons for communication or you can have a full communication board available. The GoTalk Now is similar to the GoTalk device but on an iPad and with more features and programming abilities such as allowing for embedding of videos and you can see their website connection here. It allows for the building of topic pages for different activities that can occur within an individual's day. There are standard icon pages, scene display pages, and pages that allow someone to build a message through icon sequencing and then select the sentence strip to activate the entire message at once. The GoTalk Now app has been designed to be used for multiple ages. And you can see here that there's different topic pages that could be developed. So a pretty simple icon page down here on the lower part of your screen, you can see a scene-based page that's been developed. And over here on the far right, you can see that the GoTalk Now also allows for a more common icon grid to be, paid, to be developed in order to communicate expressively. Sounding Board is a communication app available through AbleNet. It has pre-made message boards, but it also allows for development of personalized message boards with up to 20 messages or icons on the screen. There are pictures available in the picture library, but it also allows for pictures to be uploaded and used as icon symbols. The messages for the icons are easily recorded and programmed. Sounding Board also features multiple languages that include French, German, and Spanish. So here you can see an example of their preloaded boards that would be available to you. Something as simple as a yes-no board, which probably just has two icons 
to shopping, reading, leisure activities. And here's an example of one of their communication boards that has been used in relation to their picture library. But you can also upload your own pictures and you can record the messages yourself for icon selection. Toby Dynavox has several apps that are available for communication purposes. And you can find more information about each of these apps here on their website. The Compass app, up here in the top part of your screen, is a full communication app with preloaded and core vocabulary options. It is the same software that is available on many of their dedicated speech generating devices. The Compass app uses cloud technology for app management. Sonoflex, which is found in the middle of your screen, is a dynamic display communication app. It uses symbol sticks symbols and has both core and topic based vocabulary. Snapseam, which is over here in the lower left hand corner, is an AAC app that uses personal photographs that can be tagged and programmed with communication messages. For example, if taking a picture of two children playing with a ball, as seen here, the caregiver or family member could draw or highlight one part of the picture. So there would be an option for you to highlight the picture, such as the ball, and record a message to be played whenever the user touches the ball. So as another example in this picture with snap scene, if you wanted to record this child's name, you could highlight perhaps this child and label them Jane. Then you could come over here and highlight this person, and this child, and label her Sue. Then you could turn over here, highlight, and make a message for I want a new ball, as well as be able to highlight and label this little red ball that you can see them playing with as I want more ball. It's very customizable according to the pictures that you upload and program the messages onto. Snap Core, Snap Plus Core First, which is over here on the right, is the first app for the iPad. Excuse me, Snap Plus Core First is a new app for the iPad, and it is a symbol-based communication app programmed with core vocabulary. This app has pre-designed layouts with icon customization options. It is unique in that there is a literacy component to it through the Accessible Literacy Learning, or ALL, reading program. This program was developed by the researchers Dr. Janice Light and Dr. David McNaughton at Penn State University. And the ALL program comes with the SNAP Plus Core First communication app. The LAMP Words for Life communication app is a language system app based on Unity language software and is available through the Print Key Romic company. It uses the language acquisition through motor planning approach and is facilitated with language learning through consistent motor patterns for communicating messages. It has pre-programmed icons with minimal customization needed. The app can be managed and shared and backed up through the cloud 
I share PRC. Assistive Wear is a company that has developed its own AAC apps, ProloQuo to Go and ProloQuo for Text. Here you can see their link. ProloQuo to Go is a symbol based communication app with different vocabulary levels and vocabulary sets that you can choose from. It also offers different languages such as English, French, and Spanish. And the upper picture is an example of a screen from ProloQuo to Go. ProloQuo for text, the lower picture, is a text-based app for those users of AAC who are literate and can spell. It offers word and sentence prediction, 18 different languages, and many different programming options. ProloQuo for text can be used with iPhones, iPod Touch, and the Apple Watch. Touch Chat offers apps such as the Touch Chat HD AAC and Touch Chat HD AAC with Word Power, and more information can be found for those apps on the link provided. Touch Chat HD AAC is a full vocabulary communication app. It allows for the creation of customized vocabulary pages, as well as the option to use the synthesized voice or play individually recorded messages. It offers languages of English, Spanish, and has recently added Hebrew. Text use in the TouchChat app can be shared via social media on mobile technology devices. TouchChat HD AAC with word power is the same as the previously mentioned AAC app, but it is bundled with WordPower. WordPower is a word-based vocabulary with core words that allows for the quick and easy creation of sentences. And you can see an example of the TouchChat HD AAC at the top and the TouchChat HD AAC with WordPower at the bottom of your screen. The AVAS AAC app for autism is a full-featured picture language system. On their website, which is provided for you on your screen, there are training modules to teach ways for parents to facilitate language. The AVAS AAC app contains Calm Adventures, which is a game that provides opportunities for communication. The user can use the app to communicate one verbal message at a time or to communicate an entire message by sequencing icons and then activating the sentence strip. The AVAS AAC app has both icon and word prediction capabilities and also has the feature to print low-tech versions of the vocabulary boards. ACORN was developed by a parent, Wayne Watford, who is the founder and creator. It is a full communication app with a different approach to accessing vocabulary for communication. It is unique in its approach to communication in that it uses a word tree, which is a concept similar to semantic mapping. This word tree facilitates in predicting what the user is communicating. 
it creates maps based upon the frequency of the words used to communicate the message. For example, if the user were to begin to select the icon to start a message with I, a map would then appear with other options to come next. Some of these options might include want, like, love, and others. If the user selected the icon for love, then the word tree would present another word with words frequently used within the I love phrase. And you can see an example of their word tree up here. The communicator using AAC has already selected I and love. When they've selected I love, there are other options here for them to communicate the word after love. There are still more apps available, such as Say Hi AAC. Say Hi AAC uses an iPad and two iOS devices in a scanning-like fashion. It is available free through the Gwendolyn Strong Foundation and allows for customizable, customizable pages for the AAC user. And you can see here you download the software onto an iPad. Do you have one that you, one iOS device that could be used as a mouse or to begin scanning? And the second iOS device, which would be used in order to select the icon as it scans or moves over the mouse. Speak It text to speech allows for the user to type text and select the Speak It button for the message to be spoken. This app can also read a variety of text that is copied and pasted into the app and then read. And there are so many more AAC apps out there to be accessed and reviewed. There are so many AAC apps available that it is really unrealistic to review all of them within this one webinar. The communication apps that are included in this webinar are only a sampling of what's available on the market. As communication apps are explored as an option for individuals with complex communication needs, it's important to keep in mind that clinical features and needs for an app are individual, and not one app is for everyone. It's crucial to conduct trials and to analyze each app to choose the appropriate app for the person with complex communication needs. It's also important to make sure the app is still available, being supported, and updated. As I searched for AAC apps for this webinar, I found that many apps were no longer available or were no longer being supported. It would not be beneficial from a professional standpoint to recommend an AAC app to a family or a user that is no longer being made and or supported. It is also important to consider whether the app has been researched for effective communication and who has developed the program. There are a lot of quality communication apps out there on the market, but there are also apps that do not facilitate the goal of successful communication. Here is a list of resources to use related to communication apps. 
This list of resources related to communication apps can be never-ending. So these are just a sampling of some of the resources for you to look at. The Idaho Assistive Technology for All Lending Library is a place to check out an iPad with a variety of communication apps. When searching their lending library, start by searching under communication apps and then apps available on iPad. Their listing of communication apps is broken up into selections or into sections by letters of the alphabet, which allows for easier searching for the app you are looking for. PracticalAAC.org is a great resource for all things AAC related, but they also have a list of 59 free and light AAC apps from May of 2012. Apps and Emerging Tools for SLPs is an article written by Jessica Gosnell in The Leader from ASHA that discusses using AAC apps as an SLP. Jane Farrell has a consulting site that has a list of AAC apps that are based upon symbols, text, or both. Bridging Apps provides information and reviews related to apps with over 3,500 apps listed. As always, when considering an AAC app for communication, the goal is communication. You can find the list of references I used on the next two slides, so please look through them and take time to read the articles and information that they provide. There is a wealth of information available out there regarding AAC apps. The key to success is to be informed regarding what's available and determining the best fit for your communicator. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this webinar. I hope you found it beneficial.